here we are at the Pan African Space Station in Nueva York, in New York, Fifth Avenue, Boston School, New School. My God, I get confused. <laughs> do you go to one of these schools? What, mm -hmm. what school do you go to? I go to Parsons School of Design. But the, the new school is like the, the umbrella. The, the, it's like the parent. Oh, yeah. man, things have changed. They used yeah. to be so Right, and they were separate. Yeah, because uh, Parsons was, was the, was the uh, fashion school, if you would, like that. And uh, new school was well, the new school. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like that. So, um, what 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 do you do at at, at uh, I guess Parsons? What do you do at Parsons? Um, so I'm a grad student. Um, mm -hmm. in my second year, mm -hmm. I'm in the fashion studies program, mm -hmm. which is like the theory and historical side of fashion. So, um, kind of talking about how it intersects with a lot of other things like gender, economics, race. Um, well, we're, we're back yeah. up for a second. We're for a second. You know, this is getting strange to me. I mean, the modern world. You know, I'm, I'm, what the, I'm an old guy. You know, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me put it this way. In this modern world, now I hear things. The people are throwing gender. They're throwing race. They're throwing a bunch of stuff into things. I mean, when you came, when you first, well, how long are you? You're a graduate student, so you've been in, yeah. you, which, what was your undergraduate experience like? Was it here? I what, did, what was it no, I, was, um, I went to Credit Mill. So I did writing and photography. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's a good grounding. Okay, and so what did, did, did with all these was all these you know offshoots or all these concerns in your undergraduate? Did you have them then? Or? Not really. I mean, it came up in writing because you know you read a lot of literature and articles and things like that in order to inform how you can write and how to be sensitive to things and um, just understanding like diversity and difference. But it's different with fashion because. You know, it means something different to everyone. Mm. Whereas I feel like, I don't know, when you write, it's specifically about your voice. Mm -hmm. And you may or may not be capturing someone else's story. Whereas with fashion, it's like a, it's more about identity in a way mm -hmm. than just specifically your voice. You say identity, here, yeah. here's, here's the thing. With, with, when you think of something like, like dance or music, mm -hmm. there's really no language for that. Now fashion, to me, there's no language mm -hmm. for fashion. It's like, it's walking art, if you will. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to get to because I'm trying, mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out what you're doing, first of all, but, but, but let's start yeah. from there. I mean, for me, that's what fashion means. What does fashion mean to you, I guess my question. <laughs> Come on now, Ms. Carly, Ms. Carnegie <laughs> Mellon. You know, Ms. Uh, I guess I just see fashion as like, how you like cultivate or just project your perception of yourself. Uh -huh. Because it's more than just self-expression because you know, so much is informing you on a day-to-day -day life, whether it's like your culture, like your friends or you know, where you grow up. So it's more than just self-expression, but I feel like, you know, it evolves with you. Um, kind of like the way your identity does or how you think of your voice or how you even just think about yourself. So, um, but it's a good point that it doesn't have like a, the same type of language that we, you know, think of it as like music and dance, where it's like, it's kind of personal to yourself because it's, you know, there's no like common understanding that everyone would get, you know, because there's no like universal language to it. Okay, so you leave your undergraduate, you discover Parsons, or whatever, uh, you discover Parsons, how did you know about it? Did somebody say, hey, you should be. <laughs> mm -hmm. It kind of just came full circle. I wanted to go when I was in high school, and Where, I, where'd you go to high school? I went, I'm from Atlanta, and so I went to school. Um, ATL! <laughs> You're an ATL. -er. I am. Yeah, what, do, what, do, what, do you, what do you all call yourself these days? Do you, I don't even know anymore. I think I think it's Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, I don't think it's like Atlanta. ATL. I think they done messed that up. I don't know. Okay, oh, so, so you came up to New York. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, when I was in high school, I wanted to go to Parsons, but I talked oh. myself out of it because I was like, oh, I don't know what I would do. I don't know if I'm good enough. What would I even study? So I didn't apply. Mm -hmm. And then, because um, I don't know, I, didn't, I couldn't really see myself in fashion. Like, I thought mm -hmm. it was cool, and I thought it was a hobby, but I didn't think, oh, could that be my career? So then I went to Carnegie Mellon because I liked photography and journalism, so I was kind of like, oh, maybe we'll do that, maybe not. And that's kind of <laughs> what wound up happening. Mm -hmm. And halfway through, I realized that I did want to do fashion, but I didn't want to transfer because I liked what I was doing, I liked what I was learning, and I felt like it was good for me. So I was like, okay, we'll finish this and then see how we feel about it mm -hmm. after. And so I wound up taking a gap year. Like I applied to Parsons and I got in, but I didn't feel ready to go to grad school. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if that was really for me. Smart move. Yeah, so. Where, um, where'd you gap at? I went, I had an internship in London, 
Oh, and then okay, I moved so. back to Atlanta. Okay, so, so, so yeah. at least you got out the country. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it was a good time. But then, I don't know, I think moving back to Atlanta put a lot of things in perspective. It made me realize what I did do, what I didn't want to do, and sort of, um, I didn't like the path I was on, because I was just, I had just like a retail job, I was living at home, and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> is this all there is? And so when I got back into Parsons, I was like, you know, I think regardless of what happens career-wise, I think this would just be a good opportunity. Um, not only to learn, but just sort of like evolve and challenge myself. Because I've always wanted to move to New York, so it kind of just all <laughs> came together. So yeah, I have one semester to go. Hey, but what, so when you came into, what, what program, how did you get to, because mm -hmm. first of all, what program are you in? Because I, I don't know what you was talking about. When you told it me- It really is called fashion studies, yeah. Fashion studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds sort of academic, sort yeah. of hoity-toity to me, but yeah. you don't seem like a hoity-toity academic person to me. I know, yeah, which is funny. I get that a lot. Um, it's, I don't know, it's, I think that's just their way of distinguishing it from fashion design. Uh, um, because, uh, okay, yeah. you know, once people, once you say fashion, people are thinking, oh, you're designing, or mm -hmm. you're, you know, going to be in, like, the business side, or you're going to be in, like, the... So what side are you? Side. What side? What side are you in? I'm on the back end. I'm on the. What does that mean exactly? Inside, logistics. If I can't do it, first of all, what, what would the name plate on your office say? And what would the description be? That was when you get out of here and you get set up. <laughs> what, what, what's your name plate going to say? What, what's it going to say? What's, what's your full name there? What's it going to say? And then it's going to say what your your label is. What, what's it going to say? I mean, eventually, I wanted to say like CEO, but I think I'm going to go with consultant. You know, because I think because of the emphasis on sustainability and just like making the industry better than what it is and like more inclusive and just like, um, how do I put it? So what, 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 what's your name? My name? Yeah. Autumn Hill. Autumn Hill. So it says Autumn Hill uh, Environmental Consultant, Autumn Hill Fashion Consultant, Autumn Hill whatever, what consultant is it? Concerned Consultant? What is, I don't understand. What, how are you going to do this? I would say this is before you this is before we get to your CEO yeah. thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm making you. I'm making you. You know, make these leaps. Yeah, you know, because you did because I don't want you to mm -hmm. jump into these. You know, I don't want to yeah. influence your career path. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that way. Well, let's go back then before okay. we before we get to your nameplate. All right. Okay. When they accepted Autumn Hill into their program, right? What were they accepting? What program, first, what, what program were they accepting you into and what were they accepting? They were accept, accepting me into fashion studies and I believe it was because I was really like excited about and just passionate about all the like intersections and just how interdisciplinary it was. Because there's a lot of like freedom in our program to like, you know, explore and take a lot of other classes and electives. And so I very much pitched that because I had a background that was a lot of, um, a mix of a lot of things that I felt like it was a good fit for me. When you say so, it's a mix, uh, I'm sorry to go back, oh, I don't want to, actually it was going to roll, I shouldn't have stopped uh, you. But when, when, because it seemed like, you, now you just said you pitched something to them. Mm -hmm. Now that means that she was informed by, by your, 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 your high school, your time in Atlanta, mm -hmm. but also by your gap year in, in, in London. What were you doing in London that informed this also? I was working at a fashion magazine. Okay, okay. Now, uh, now, see, I'm getting a little better uh, thing like that. What, what fashion magazine was it? I was looking for Shone, which is like an online magazine. They have a physical magazine, but it only comes out like twice a year. Mm -hmm. So most of their work is on their website, on social media. Okay, so you came into Parsons with, with mm -hmm. an idea, mm -hmm. and, and you pitched this idea. What, what did you pitch them? With? <laughs> how, how, how did they see your energy? That's what I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure out. I think... That's a good question. I I think it was just a combination of things. I feel like even though I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, I think it was evident that I really cared about fashion, but I also mm -hmm. cared about a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't just be in a program that just had, you know, was only in one box. I needed mm -hmm. something that could, you know, do a lot of things, but prepare me for going into the industry. So. Okay, now let me try to ask you the real stock questions or whatever have you. What the hey are you doing? What is this program? What, what, you, you mentioned it to me before. I still don't un I understand. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. What, what is this? Are you a, yeah. I just, what? I mean, we're basically learning the, like, the 
the history, the theory, and the analysis that other people have like brought forward about fashion. So about like fashion and the body, fashion and gender, fashion and um, culture, things like that. So. Okay, let me. Yeah. Okay, it's let me. Weird. Let me. Try, no, no, let, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I got to get to the bottom of this. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Just, that's kind of thing. Let me put it this way. Okay, let me take a little journey. Right, okay. long time ago. Okay. Let's say in the. I guess that was the 70s. Mm-hmm. You know, Rockefeller made this law. The governor of New York made this law that if, if he was a certain age, over 18, if he was caught selling whatever drugs or whatever it is, mainly heroin, or something like that, then he was going to go to jail. Right. So what the drug, what the drug pushes dealers did, they said, well, eh, they're not touching the 16-year-olds, so they got the 16-year-olds to, to sell the drugs. So now a 16-year-old trying to sell a 32-year-old drug who have been buying, you know, heroin for years, they just smack them and, you know, just take the drugs. And the, 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 the drug dealer said, hey, next time somebody do that, this is a gun, just, just cap them in their behind, right? And so so now we got guns and, 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 and 16-year-olds with, 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 with whatever have you. Uh, fast forward a little bit, you know, these 16 year olds or whatever, then they say, hey, then they could be 18 year old, whatever it is. And they say, hey, there's some crime in this in this area. There's too much crime in this area. So now you, you take a, 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 somebody gets up age, they, uh, whatever it is, they go to jail, you know, they go to jail upstate. You know, you don't stay in Brooklyn, right. you go to yeah. stay upstate. So they take away their, 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 uh, their belts and their, and their shoelaces so they won't, I guess, they won't commit, I don't know. Black people don't really commit suicide yeah. back then, but whatever. So now their pants is drooping, whatever have you. They all come from a certain area in Brooklyn, but basically, you know, three districts in Brooklyn. They go back home. Everybody says, hey, that's a hip look. So now they start with, and everybody starts wearing their head pants drooping to get a bigger, you know, bigger, you know, uh, bigger size pants, whatever have you. And all of a sudden, somebody in France sees that and says, hey, let me do yeah. this, right? Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, well, at the same time, that's, that becomes a part of a cultural move that was happening with the hip hop. So right. everybody all over, all over America, all the black people all over America is wearing this, da 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 da. Then all of a sudden, it hits the, then, then everybody's doing this. Is that what you're talking about? I'm just trying to figure out. And then. Th- that's what I thought it would be like. Ah, okay. thank you. Yeah. Okay, now, so what, so what is it then? Um, but instead, it's more like. Um, It's very Western. It's very like huh. European centric and like white focused. So even though it is about fashion, I feel like I don't know. I feel like it's kind of watered down, um, and I feel like I don't know if that it's just because the program's new or because of like the demographic in our department or just like a power balance, but it really is more so about um, looking at different threads, but they all kind of have that overtone to it, you know, like, oh, this is like, you know. But it seems like you you mentioned something almost like there's a history to this, you know what I'm saying? And if the history comes from, uh, for lack of a better term, the inner city or the urban, Mm -hmm. or or, or, uh, let me say the downtrodden areas of society, Now it's going into, then it goes into fashion world, and now academia has to deal with it. You're right. calling you academia now. So now you, you, you have to, when you define it, mm-hmm. but when you, when you now codify it, yeah. right? That goes back out into the world somehow. It's mm-hmm. some sort of uh, cycle, circle, yeah. um, some sort of you know, system that, that is being codified, mm-hmm. but you're codifying it. Yeah. And, and what well, like you're saying right now, almost like you're telling me the, the, the Western uh, a mind that the Western yeah. mentality is codifying it, but yet still, I'm not saying that I don't know where you come from in Atlanta. But my point, you, I, I assume because of, of your your race, gender, whatever, you're a lot closer mm-hmm. to the source that, that they're trying to codify. Right. But are you when you, are you telling me that they, that when you come here, you don't they have more they have more influence on you than you have on them? I'm just trying to you understand what I'm trying to get at here. Yes, I think. What I'm trying to say is, it seems to me that your bona fides mm-hmm. would be more authentic, mm-hmm. even if you didn't grow up in the, you know, with, with criminals, whatever have you. Right. I'm not, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you didn't grow up with the downtrodden, mm-hmm. your bona fides would be a lot closer than mm-hmm. what seems so your, yeah. these institutional bona fides. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know, does that make sense? Yeah. I feel like the best way to explain it is they're like presenting us an encyclopedia, mm-hmm. you know, of fashion, but we're only looking at like one segment of it because all the all the things you described, you know, have never come up, even though, you know, it's true. 
like even when we had our fashion history class, it was kind of looking at it in a very like white centric way. Like, oh, this is twenties fashion. Oh, this is order, fashion. Order, you know, order, which is order. crazy because you know that's there's so much more to be told. And you know, the only countries we're looking at are like France and like England and like the U.S. We're not, you know. Anything from Asia and Africa is not even like entering the equation, which is like. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah. Hold on a second. I'm sorry, <laughs> darling. I don't. I don't want to do this to you, right? But don't you think that you almost have a responsibility? Mm-hmm. Let me put it this way. Okay, the, you want to. You want to get a uh, whatever you're going to get from that. No worries. I right. mean, you're going to get the little sheepskin, so you could be. <laughs> yeah. So, so you can, when you put your plaque, when you get your desk and with your, you know, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, uh, autumn thingy on there you, and you're going to have the, yeah. the sheepskin on your wall right yeah. and so that's going to satisfy them mm-hmm. but as you it seems to me mm-hmm. as you go through as you satisfy their requirement it's almost like it used to be say that we had to do double, we had to do double what they did it almost yeah. seems like that you're almost responsible to do a parallel thing in other words even as you work what they're doing you have to almost work another lane that it's not that, yeah. that doesn't exist even if when you come out, it's exhausting to you. Right. That you're sweated, you 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 sweated, you 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 feel almost broken. Mm-hmm. But when you come out, you have what they want, but also mm-hmm. you've yeah. created something right. that some other people can use that they haven't thought about because it's not comes from their perspective. I'm just I'm, I don't even know what I'm asking you. I'm, you know what I mean? No, but I know what, what you mean. Yeah, I think I think I've thought of that in terms of my career, but not my identity. Like I've, because like, for example, in our program, they kind of care about certain careers. So, you know, to them, they're like, oh, now that we've taught you these things, you should either go into journalism, curation or archiving. Mm. And so within the first semester, I realized I'm not, <laughs> that's not what I came for and it's not what I'm going to do. So once I realized that I wanted to go into human rights, I felt very like, you know, on the outside or kind of like, you know, an outlier because... Mm-hmm. You know, they don't really know how to help me. Like, obviously, you know, they're rooting for me, but because they see things in a very, like, I don't know, like, strict way or kind of narrow way, it's a lot, it's, you're kind of having to, like, add, you know, more to the table, you know, because it wasn't already there, you know? Right, exactly. And so I think, I felt that way because there's not, like, a, a strong presence about labor and human rights in our courses and just the things we talk about and the structure of the program. But I don't know, I think I think I kind of let the the identity part go too soon. Like I think mm-hmm. I like made peace with it. So I was like, I mean, well, I don't know what I expected. So I just kind of like, you know, looked past it and just focused on, you know, what can I make out of this experience. But that's a really good point because I feel like um, you know, it'll never really expand or evolve the way it should if it's always kind of focused on that same, I don't know, the same perspectives, the same geography, the same, like, way of thinking, so. Well, you know, you, I, I guess I probably should try to end this, but you've been fascinating to talk to, but I, but I, can't, I can't stop. I have to, just a couple of more things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned the human rights, whatever, have you, and that, that's your, that's, I don't want to say your lane, I don't want to be modern, but, but, that, but that's your concern. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, what, what? How is this helping? This this concern. I mean, how, yeah. how is it coming? How's how's it going? It is going well. It's tricky because it's even though that part of the industry's always been there, it's only gotten like more attention as of lately because of like fast fashion and like climate change and things like that. Mm-hmm. In other words, now people are like thinking about it, or at mm-hmm. least it's on their radar. Whereas before, you know, people didn't really <laughs> like care that there were like mm-hmm. you know textile mills and factories and um, crazy work conditions. So there's that. That's like on a global scale, like what's happening. Um, as for me, what's happening, I am trying to figure out the best way to enter it, you know, because it's not, because it's a little more like an of an off beaten path. It's mm-hmm. trickier to kind of like, you know, find the right people, the right network. The but right it almost sounds like what you're doing, you, you, you're you almost going to have to enter some sort of political sphere. In other words, you're going to have to your, your consultancy is going to have to deal with with uh, uh, with politicians. Who, I'm not talking low national. I mean global, you know, laws. I guess you know, well, people who make policy. Forget policy. People who make policy or influence policy. Is that what 
I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm hearing. Yeah. I mean, ideally, that's what I would want. Um, mm-hmm. Because, I don't know, it's just like the, the closer I get to graduation and kind of like being, you know, like back in the real world, it's like that, that looming question of like, okay, how are we really going to do this? Mm-hmm. And so in my mind, I thought, oh, we'll just work at a company and, you know, we'll help them, you know, be their best, you know, have them pay their workers right and do the right thing and have certified factories and things like that. And the more I think about it, I just feel like there's just so much to do. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I could devote my life, you know, making like Nike the best it could be. Or, you know, I could, you know, take it higher. You know, well, then you have to go to Vietnam and make like, Nike the best it could be. Look, <laughs> and one, one, uh, one, one tiny, one last question. Mm-hmm. You've been here for a while. You're about to graduate. When are you graduating? May, 2020. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, so ha- have you found, uh, I don't want to say a cabal, but a group that's, that's a, a group of supporters that, that that's in your, mm-hmm. you, you know, what's your support here? Mm. That's a tough question. Um, it's a, a mix of people. It's a mm. mix of people. I think, um, I have a like, handful of friends in my, depart- not department, but class in my mm-hmm. year of our department because even though we're all doing different things I think there's a there's a collection of us that are misfits that want to do really you know unique specific things I re- I re- really I'm sorry I don't want to interrupt you but misfits is all right but I like when you said outliers yeah the outliers, <laughs> like outliers? Uh, that, that's okay. the that's the monitor okay. you know Mount, Mount Gladwell made it made it famous so we want to use outliers for you but uh, I guess when, when you, your, your group of outliers is, is, is it a, I guess when we ask, forget the racial or, or, or gender thing, is more of a, is it, is it a mentality thing that you're, that's bonds you all together? What bonds you all together? I mean, aside from, aside from being outside, outliers. I would say it's like a combination of passion and resilience. Uh. Because we know what we want to do, even though everyone around us, you know, it's like, oh, but you don't want to do that, you know, so we're very committed to, you know, what we, you don't want to write our pieces about what we want to work into, what we want to do beyond Parsons. And so it's a lot of, you know, kind of encouraging each other and being like, oh, even though, you know, we're having to like figure this out as we go, or it's not what we thought it would be, you know, it's still worth doing. So. I wish you the most, Thank you. <laughs> the most. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so very much for this. Yeah, absolutely.